Hi folks, I'm Nikhil. I'm the CEO of Mapper.ai. We're a, a machine readable mapping company. And we're one of the partners of Velodyne. So Velodyne makes amazing, beautiful 3D sensors. But these sensors by themselves uh, need something very critical, some data to enable the kinds of use cases that we're seeing today, like level four self-driving and all of the uh, lower levels as well. So Mapper is a data services company and Mapper has introduced what we like to call 3D machine readable maps as a service. So one of the big problems uh, when you think about uh, today's autonomous vehicles is uh, you can kind of, uh, most people talk about it, the perception of the world around the vehicle is really challenging. The vehicle needs to know where people are, where cars are, it needs to know which lane it's in, where are the trees, etc. Trying to do this all on the car would require a trunk full of liquid-cooled computers. Right? What we do is by mapping in advance, we, we enable what we call pre-perception, which is the whole scene has been perceived previously, so the real-time work that the car needs to do is diminished, it goes down. And so now, instead of having 20 computers in the trunk, you can have just one computer combined with our maps and real-time sensors to enable all kinds of autonomy use cases. So that's what we like to call maps as a service. And what does that look like? So Mapper's 3D machine-readable maps include rich 3D data, data with which you can enable precision localization, data with which you can enable scene understanding. And along with that, we have all these layers of semantics, which includes lane markings, uh, 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 parking locations, connectivity between lanes, uh, traffic signs, traffic lights, all the levels of semantics and annotations that are relevant for what they call path planning. Right? The 3D is important for localizing, the semantics are important for path planning. Now here's the big differentiator. These 3D maps were not built using Velodyne's LiDAR. This is not built using any LiDAR. We build our 3D maps using our own mapping device. Right? This mapping device costs $350. It's composed of an array of cameras and a computer inside of it. It can easily be installed inside any vehicle, like a, if you're a person who has a sedan, it easily fits inside your vehicle with the rear view mirror being here. And once it's installed, it's a permanent install. You don't have to take it off. It blends very nicely within the car. And this device produces the kind of 3D data that you're looking on the screen here, right? It's high quality 3D. It can't do this all the time. It can only do it during the daytime. But mapping is an offline task. It's not something that needs to happen in real time. So we can capture this kind of rich 3D data with which we can enable all the autonomy use cases. And as a result of building it in this device, we can put it on tens of thousands of vehicles. This costs today $350, right? This $350 and it's bound to go down to $200 once we scale up to 10,000 units. So for a scale of a few hundred units, it's still $350. So with this device, we produce our maps, but how do we do it, right? So the device, as I said, is $350. It can just be installed inside any vehicle. It goes behind the rear view mirror very easily. Thanks to companies like Uber and Lyft, there is a whole acceptance of freelance uh, workforce and freelance economy that we piggyback on. So if you really think about the way mapping was done until today, uh, it has been dedicated mapping vehicles, bespoke vehicles that cost about a half a million dollars. Uh, and that is just really expensive to acquire data. We're a step change from that. We can install these in anybody's vehicles, give them tasks to drive around and acquire data. And as a result, we can acquire data of very rich quality, which is highly accurate, at an update frequency of almost daily, not once a year. Since we're acquiring data so frequently, we can capture the changes in the environment. We can capture, uh, if a lane has moved just one foot over, we can capture that. Uh, places where construction zones got introduced, we can capture that. We're constantly mapping. Our, mapping are, our maps are like a living, breathing organism. They're constantly changing with the environment. And as a result of having the most up-to-date maps, we can enable very high quality autonomy. This car is our own autonomous car. It has a Velodyne puck on it, the earlier version of the 32C, the Velodyne 16, that is a significantly lower priced uh, device. That coupled with our maps can enable the car to drive itself with centimeter level accuracy. 
The differentiator here is that the maps, like I said, were built using camera-based systems. They weren't built using the LiDAR. And so we really turned it on its head. Most people think about maps being built with LiDAR and being used on a car that has camera. We've turned that on its head. We've, we, we're saying we can scale up mapping because today this is all commodity parts. I mean, it has uh, low-cost cameras, low-cost computers. There's nothing in here that is unobtainium. And so we build up these large-scale maps, and with these maps, we can enable a car to drive itself with centimeter level accuracy. In this example here, this car drives itself uh, with an accuracy of under four centimeters. Right? So that's the level of accuracy we can accomplish using just a Velodyne 16 in real time, coupled with the data that's produced by our device. Right? So that's what we're doing at Mapper. If anyone's interested in what we're doing, come on over, and I'm happy to tell you more. Thank you, everyone.